Welcome to our first Behind the Whiteboard session. I am your host, Colby K, otherwise known as Colby Colobus of The Healthy Primate. Today we are going to cover probably the number one most asked question of us here at The Healthy Primate. It is that around how does my body produce stress, anxiety, and dealing with that from a chemical perspective. So today's session, Stress 101, a condensed version of what the scientific name would be pregnenolone steel. We're gonna start at the top and build out a pyramid here. First piece is cholesterol. I'm gonna ask you, is cholesterol good? Cholesterol bad? High cholesterol better? Low cholesterol better? When we go through this, we're gonna answer that question here at the end. Cholesterol, think of that as the mother building block of how our bodies produce either stress or hormones. Starting with cholesterol, cholesterol produces what's called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone now gets split into one of two functions. I can go here, DHEA, and this route is for my hormone production, or I can go this way into progesterone and down into and cortisol. Cortisol is our stress chemical. Here's where things get very interesting. When you think about stress and anxiety, you think of it as a mental crutch and something to slow you down. There are such things as good stress and bad stress. And if, if I explain that to you, if you are put into a hard scenario where let's say you're out hiking with your family and an animal comes out, whether it's a snake or a bear or a tiger, or whatever, wherever you're hiking, let's say, and an animal comes at you, you have to make a very quick decision on do I fight or do I flight? You've heard that term a lot. That is where this happens. So if I don't have these firing, I'm not gonna be able to make that reaction. I'm gonna be very lethargic and I'm gonna get eaten, right? So stress is actually a good thing. It helps you from a high performance perspective, but not all stress is created equal. So when we talk about pregnenolone, let's talk about it in senses of numbers. I'm gonna use a very simple example for math. Pregnenolone, you can only do so many of these and produce so many of these a day. Right? For this example, we can produce 10. I'm gonna walk you through a traditional kind of day in the life. It's Monday morning, the alarm goes off, I see it or I hear it, I hit it again, I hit the snooze, I hit it again, I hit the snooze, I hit it again. Now I'm becoming very good at hitting that snooze button. I get out of bed, I go to the shower, I do a quick rinse, brush my teeth, throw my clothes on. At this point, I'm too late to really get a breakfast in. I kiss my significant other, say bye to the kids, jump in the car, hit the on-ramp, and what happens? Boom, I'm stuck in my commute. You get to the commute, you get to the office, you walk in, you probably have an, a, a boss who's a dickhead, you can barely stand him, you go into a workload that you can barely handle, you've got things coming at you from all angles, next thing you know, it's lunch. What's on the menu? Company's providing pizza again, awesome. I love a good slice. Put in two, suck down a Mountain Dew, get back to the work life. Sitting at my desk, answering emails, browsing YouTube, looking at, at the political landscape, watching Facebook, answering a couple customer emails, then I jump back in my car to do what? Sit in traffic. Get in traffic, I get home, walk in, grab the kids, interact with my wife. I'm thrown right back into the mix. Next thing you know, it's nine o'clock at night. I'm gonna binge watch my favorite show on Netflix. I'm gonna get a couple beers and I'm gonna try to get to sleep. Well, based on that example, am I producing cortisol from a stress perspective to make sure I don't crash into the guy in front of me or tell my boss where to go or to have a heart attack or stroke out? Chances are I'm producing about eight of these just to keep me sane. This is about 90% of Americans today, right? Well, that leaves me with two opportunities to produce what's called DHEA or my hormone production, right? What happens when you have low hormone production? You guys have all seen the funny ads with the guy with low, low testosterone. Well, if, I, if my body is firing on all cylinders and my pregnenolone changes, let's say this is eight and this is two, I go into testosterone production. The same chemical compound for women produces estrogen or estrone in this example. You might know some of the symptoms. I'm gonna talk about the signs here for a minute. Let me point your directions to this, your, your, eye, your eyes to this list here. Headaches, fatigue, not sleeping very well, lack of concentration or that cognitive kind of functions of really being able to answer things fast. If you have these, if you're feeling that, it's because you're living here. You're living, in a de you're living in a deficit of your hormone production and your scales are way off, right? So from a very high level, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a science as to how your body produces stress, 
Let me answer the question, is cholesterol good? Is it bad, is high better, is low better? What we hear continually from the medical community is we have to lower your cholesterol. We need to lower your cholesterol. Not all cholesterol is cre created equally. And if I get medication to lower my cholesterol, what is that going to do? It's going to lower my production of pregnenolone. And if pregnenolone is the mother building block, these things are now out of whack. That is the answer on is cholesterol good or bad. Not all cholesterol is created equal. In the next coming up series of Behind the Whiteboard, we are gonna go over this specific piece around hormone production. I'm going to talk about adrenals. We'll have some guest doctors and specialists come in over the next few months to really dive deep on translating why it is we do what we do from the inside out and being able to translate that to you. On behalf of all of us here at the Healthy Primates, this is Colby. Thank you so much for tuning in. See ya.